bad feeling about this. It sounds like there's a new episode loading. Don't panic. No one would have believed in the early years of the 21st century that our world was being watched by intelligences greater than our own. Wait, really? I refuse to read all of this prologue just for that one week, albeit factual gag. This scrolling text thing's been overdone too. Blah blah, observed and studied. Blah blah, something about microscopes and water. Da de da da da, space. Slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. Hello, my name is David. You can call me Dave. I'm a new consultant. You're expecting me. I've got nothing on here for a Dave. My associates may have hacked. I mean booked it, using my true name. Which is? It's too difficult for you puny humans to pronounce. I'll write it down. Computer says no. Check again. This is unacceptable. If your name's not down, you're not coming in. You didn't see that. See what? Oh, you mean just then, when you made that new security guy explode? Look into my eyes. Not around my eyes, into my eyes. You didn't see that. Repeating the line over isn't going to make me forget whatever it is you want me to forget. Which bit of all this do you want me to forget? Get yourself down to reception, before any suspicions are raised. I feel pretty. You've got to do the voice, Roger. Yes, Monsignor. Too much! But what are you doing later? Intel suggests that being on reception at all times would actually raise more suspicions than regularly leaving it abandoned. Do what you think's right. You know... I haven't had my usual inane 8.30 support call from Mel yet. Well, I've finally been given a new guy to help me with security. He should be in reception with Mel now. And how did you get that approved? Under justify new position, I ticked the 
for single episode plot purposes only, Box. Yep, that'll do it. As a result, I finally get to use the two-way walkie-talkies I got in an office secret Santa back in 1980. 1980? But that would mean you had an office job when you were, what, two years old? Don't try and do the maths, Todd. It's awfully complicated. Breaker, breaker. Pwn Pete to noob guy. Pwn Pete to noob guy. Over. Requesting sit rep. Over. Am I coming in clear? Hmm. Must be out of range. Or he's dead already. I'm going to go and see if I can find him. See you later, Todd. Hello, IT support. How can I disappoint you this morning? It's Mel. I'm a receptionist. Morning, Mel. I've been expecting you. I've got a problem with my computer. I say my. Obviously, I'm referring to the one that the company has provided me within this place of work. What is it this time? Can't find the power switch? Forgotten which one's the leftmost button again? I can't access my files on the server. All my shortcuts have stopped working. I've tried all the obvious, including trying to connect using UNC paths, but that's not worked either. What? Are you feeling okay? Have you been replaced by some kind of intelligent alien life form? <laughs> You're so funny. Can you solve my IT problem? Well, I usually get to the bottom of it. But with your unique set of skills, logical troubleshooting generally goes out the window. Get him to come here. Can you come and fix it for me now? Look, check all the cables are plugged in. Try rebooting it. And if it's still not working, come back. And in the meantime, I'll have thought of some more stuff for you to try to avoid me coming to look at it. Thanks, Ted. Bye. Looks like I'm just going to have to go get them all myself. Well, that was odd. Something's not right. But then at the end, she did call me Ted, so it's 50-50. Meh, never mind. What's occurring, Todd? Ah, uh, you know, the usual. No, wait, actually. Have you noticed anything unusual today? I've just had a coherent and technically relevant support call from Mel. Have you uh, been on the Mario's again? I played a bit of Minesweeper. That's about it. Hey, uh, have you had any more thoughts about how to get the boss to sign off on those new shiny gadgets that I showed you? Other than telling him that all of our competitors are already ahead of the game on these balls, so we can't afford to drop our balls, no. Well, doesn't that usually do it? Yeah, eventually. That is, if the colour to graph ratio is right and the PowerPoint presentation he always insists on. The purchase orders are all ready to go. I'm gonna pop up and see him at the next convenient scene transition. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go and grab myself a coffee. Do you want one bringing back? Yeah, sure, thanks. Black, seven sugars, please. You know what they say. Once you go black, you never buy milk for drink making purposes again. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. I know you're there. I thought we had an agreement. You've got your thing. I've got mine. Do you want? Well, if that aliens crossover thing doesn't work out, get your people to call my people. And that's ever going to flop. You know, I can still see you. It's buffering. There it is. Shakes brings other boys to the yard. They're like body be boo back me. Hello, my name's Dave. I'm the new consultant. New consultant? Hang on, I'm the consultant around here. There could be only one. Whatever. Clean up on all three.
get yourself to wherever it is you're supposed to be. Roger, Roger. I'm Siobhan, not Roger. Roger's disguised as the girl from reception. He always calls dibs on the female disguises. I worry about him. It's not easy being green. Actually, you can come with me. I'll need some help in their canteen. All of your bodies are belong to us. feeling about this. Get down with the sickness, open up your head and let it flow into me. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness, your mother get up, come on, get down with the sick. Oh, there's some clumsy. I can't even rule Jarvis out of this one. If it hasn't got a USB connection, he's hopeless. Oh well. No use crying over spilt coffee, I guess. Ah, Todd. I'm glad you're here. I need you to look at something for me. It is IT related this time, isn't it? I really don't need to see any more anatomical images that can't be unseen. I want to make things on my screen bigger. Well, have you tried sitting closer to it? I'm already sat as close as I can get. An extreme diet might just be your best solution. What? I said I'll adjust your monitor's screen resolution. Sometimes I wish I could just eat my own brain. Put an end to this banality. You know, I could have done this over the phone. That is, if you would have approved the thing I showed you the other day. Now you mention it. I did take another look at your PowerPoint presentation, and it appears there are enough green and blue bars to sign it off after all. Well, it just so happens that I have it right here. Leave it on my desk. I'll sign it and get Stan to collect it later. Right, well done. The computer's sorted. Okay, what are all these new things on my desktop now? The desktop shortcuts. They've always been there. Really? Are you sure? Morning, Mel. Morning, Peter. Is that a new perfume you're wearing today, Mel? I'm not wearing any perfume. Oh, I don't suppose you've seen my new security guard this morning, have you? He was supposed to be down here. I've not seen him, mate, and I haven't moved from this desk all morning. Really? Are you sure you're feeling all right? What's this? It was there when I got back from getting a drink earlier. I thought you said you hadn't moved from that desk all morning. Apart from going for a drink, I haven't. Oh, and then when I went to the toilet. Apart from going for a drink and going to the toilet, twice, I haven't been away from this desk. You turn your back for five minutes and someone gets eviscerated. I've arranged for cleaners to come and sort it out as soon as possible. This splatter smells like the new security guard I interviewed, and Mel doesn't smell like Mel. Never mind, Mel. I'll take a look around for my new guy. See you later. Hello, my name's Dave. Hi, I'm Lane. But everyone calls me fast. Well, I'll say everyone. Well, it's not really caught on yet. It is my long-term plan. You won't need a long-term plan where you're going. On my planet, they'll call you dinner. Um, you're not taking me anywhere. And certainly not for dinner. That's never happened before. Under different circumstances, you, me and that tongue of yours could have had some good times together. But I'm telling you right now, I'm out! I can identify anyone by their unique scent, and I'm telling you for a fact, Mel isn't Mel, and the blood splattered remains smelt of the new security guard. Okay, four things, Pete. Firstly, 
you lot all smell the same to me. Secondly, you've got serious issues. Unique scent? Thirdly, I know Mel definitely isn't herself. And finally, I don't know if it's related, but Jarvis is missing too. Something's definitely afoot. Twelve inches. Really? I'm here all week. I've really got to get used to you doing that. Todd, Pete, thank God. I've just had this guy trying to abduct me. Call himself Dave. He said he has his own planet. He wanted to take me there. For dinner. Was he not your type then, Lane? Um, no, he was not. He did have an impressive tongue, though. <laughs> he didn't want to take me out for dinner. He said on his planet I'd be dinner. Hmm, that's Dave's character. We now know he's an alien, so he's most likely got something to do with Mel's weirdness and Jarvis's disappearance. He's been a very naughty boy. It sounds like he's taking humans for a source of food and likely swapping them for some sort of alien copy, so nobody notices. What these aliens couldn't factor into their plan, though, was Mel's sudden display of basic intelligence raising suspicion. It would also explain why Mel doesn't smell of Mel to you, Pete. What? <sighs> Don't ask. Right, we need to create a player-generated quest and go and warn the boss. Hmm, well... If we give this alien time to abduct the boss first, and replace him with an intelligent copy, it'd make explaining what's happening much easier. And probably earn us double XP. Both are very good points. The boss never really gets what's going on during these parts of the episodes anyway. We're doing this for the reoccurring characters that we like. Come on people! Carry on, I'll catch up. I've got a bad feeling about this. Pete, what are you doing? Come to the lift. I'll be back. Okay, let's do this. Remember, no big words. You must be the guy here to install my new massage chair. I'm not here to install anything. If you're not the chair guy, who are you? I'm the guy who's going to take you to a place where all of your dreams can come true. If all of your dreams are to be eaten alive by hungry, intergalactic, shape-shifting, reptilian overlords. It's not one that instantly springs to mind. I had one where I dreamt I was a giant donut. I ended up eating my ring. It looks like we're too late. You again, and you've brought two friends, neither of which appear warm-blooded enough for my palate. What have you done with our friends? No time for exposition. I'm not that type of guy. <laughs> You're going to have to go after them. Yeah, I suppose. They're morons, but there are morons. I'll come too. You'll need my nose. Okay, when this is all over, I want the whole peat smelling business explaining. Let's just leave it at he smells. Get the girl, kill the baddies, and save the entire planet. I've been waiting for you. Did you not think that it's knock on my door? I am very, very sneaky, sir. So, what do you want? Fight! So be it. I don't like the dark. Really? Well, you're the security guard. Why haven't you got a torch? It's in my locker. I use the batteries for my walkie-talkies. This is convenient for the animators. I guess this will be a text adventure parody.
I didn't order takeout. And we didn't order an extra from the Moss Eisley Cantina. Let's do this. Don't leave me on my own. Where did you go? What just happened? I told you not to leave me on my own. Let's just find everyone and get the hell out of here. shape-shifting reptilian overlords need IT support, and also have no shortage of their own equivalent of subhuman scum. Don't you think it's convenient that all these doorways have signs in both alien and English? You know, it's comments like that that will cost you dialogue in future episodes. This beats those awful black lobsters we had from LV426. Holy moly, Batman! Shut up and take it like a man, Robin. I'll bring shark repellent, you said. This is about to get all knifey and forky. I guess no one expects them to go out like this. A two-bird roast. Technically, bats are mammals. There you go again. Work with me, Pete. They'll only write in otherwise. Shouldn't we help them? They can serve as a distraction while we find our principal cast members, before they get the same treatment. It's what the Cape Crusader and Boy Wonder would have wanted. This way, they haven't died in vain. Yeah, that. Let's get out of here. I smell dead people. Yeah, that. That'd be me. Sorry. I can smell regular people too. And the boss. And that weird alien fellow. You're a big man, but you're in bad shape. Let's finish this then. I've got a 12 o'clock meeting with HR, and you will end me if I'm late. I guess using my teleport ability all the time is why I'm in such bad shape. You. Me. Him. Let's do this. Just another day at the office. Hmm. Looks like it needs some kind of swipe card to operate it. I found this security swipe on Dave's corpse. Let me try it. for that. He said they were going to spit roast me. I really hope you mean hog roast. Oh, damn it. They'll have to come back for the livers. 
Everyone follow me and Todd. I think you'll find it's Todd and me. For that, you can get to the back of the line. Get to the back. They've got whatever that guy was called who was behind me. Just keep running! We could always sacrifice the boss. That'll buy the rest of us some time. I've still got a purchase order to sign off for you. Uh, just keep running. I don't want to die again. You have to do something, Stan. I don't have to do anything. This place could do with a good clear out. Todd, ah, oh, you're back. This thing started some kind of explosive thing in my bob, and Stan won't stop it. You're one ugly motherfucker. Time to die. Not today. Pete, help me get it on the conveyor. <laughs> It's as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror, almost suddenly silenced. A bit of an exaggeration. Probably more like hundreds. Thousands at the most. You're needed right away. I have a sudden influx of souls that need the paperwork processing. Well, what's everyone standing around here doing nothing for? Back to work! Well, I make it lunchtime. Canteen, anyone? And we've still got the whole afternoon ahead of us. It's very quiet in here for a lunchtime. That'll be down to all of the extras we left in the mothership. You left people behind? Well, they didn't really serve any specific purpose. And they can always draw new ones for any subsequent episode requirements. Everybody's dead, Todd. Not everybody. And don't even think about doing the Red Dwarf gag. What about all the other alien clones that are in there? That most likely got wrapped up in some deleted scenes we didn't make. What's Red Dwarf?